Let's talk about reskilling, though, in the age of AI. And this is a report by IBM called Augmented Work for an Automated AI-Driven World. In that report, which I have here, Augmented Work for an Automated AI-Driven World by IBM in order to help you boost performance with human-machine partnerships, there are a few key takeaways that the impact of AI is going to mean that up to 1.4 billion in the workforce will need to reskill in the next few years. And there are some areas that are more prone for being replaced by AI than others. Marketing and customer service are a little more prone to that than things such as procurement or risk compliance and finance here, it says. But then one thing that's really interesting that they highlighted in this chart here is that STEM skills, proficiency in STEM. The way that you read this is across the top here, we've got these different percentages based on executive responses for the year 2016, 2018, and 2023. And you will see that time management skills and ability to prioritize has increased over time. It was down at 33% in 2016 and all the way up to 42% at the top here in 2023. And then proficiency in STEM used to be the top most skill set in 2016 and now is all the way down here in 12th place at 28%. Still important, but not nearly as important as some of these others, such as time management, ability to work effectively in team environments, et cetera. There is this seismic shift across executive perspective as far as what is important now. If you think back in time a few years, there was a time whenever tech executives were saying everyone can code and was really trying to promote this idea that anyone could code. And that wasn't necessarily the truth here. And on this slide, I asked ChatGPT to segment what are the hard skills versus the soft skills on this chart here and to revisit this based on that categorization, these top most ones are what are known as soft skills. You don't get into any sort of hard skills until you get into the fifth most listed thing here, analytic skills with business acumen. That's a combination of hard skills and soft skills because you gotta have that business acumen as well. And then you don't start really getting into the hard skills, the more technical things, technical proficiencies, to get later in this list. And so I think that myself and many online trainers, we tend to gravitate towards the hard skills. Here is how to code or here's where to click. Here's how to build a report or a dashboard or a profile, scenario driven things inside of Salesforce, for example. But where you'll really need to focus in on now moving forward are things that are not necessarily hard skills, such as where to click or how to code but more how to communicate. That is what I think is really going to be more important here as signified in that graph. We have seen what I would call a seismic shift of restraints in this age of AI. Prior to AI, we did see tech enthusiasts saying that anyone can code and really pushing low code or no code. And now we're where time is our greatest restraint because we do have the ability to do more with less because of things such as ChatGPT. That is leading to what is known as a low or no code era. And I've seen that with applications, there's low code or no code apps or with books even. I've been looking into Amazon and Kindle publishing, et cetera. And I've seen people out there saying that you can actually create books with either little to no effort. That's thanks to AI. And then also a lot of those types of books would be things such as journals, coloring books, et cetera. But it seems like there is this shift towards low effort, no effort, low code, no code. That is because a lot of the menial and time-consuming tasks are being offloaded to AI. This is leading to where we can experience more prolific productivity. You can really have the ability to be more prolific and create more as well as be more productive if you know how to leverage tools such as ChatGPT and Salesforce is that this gives you almost a superpower where you can execute on ideas, whether those be your own or someone else's. This enables you to be a creator, and this is indeed a creator economy. It's essential that you really focus in on those skills here into the future as you leverage AI and tools such as Salesforce to be able to create applications and solutions. When you think about the intersection between hard skills and those soft skills or the things listed in that report, I really boil it down to problem solving being the key essential ingredient. If you are finding that you're being told often that you don't have enough experience, you're getting shot down in interviews, you're not exemplifying the ability to problem solve is the issue. 
you really want to look at your ability to communicate and also your ability to problem solve. And that is a combination of being able to combine your hard and soft skill sets in order to solve problems rather than create problems or identify problems. There's vast majority of people out there in the workforce tend to either just complain or say what's wrong. They don't necessarily have the ability to problem solve. It's one thing to identify problems, but be able to solve those problems is what is a key skill there. And so there's concepts as well with AI, especially known as the human in the loop. And this is something that we're seeing with Salesforce with their advent of their AI solutions is keeping the human in the loop and taking feedback from its human users as well to be sure that the advice that's being given, the solutions that are being provided, you have a human in the loop of that. And why that's so important for you in your career is that it is a human such as yourself that can identify any sort of opaque patterns and combinations where you can realize and see that if you combine certain things together, that can make for quite a successful enterprise there as well. I did want to make you aware of my upcoming live Salesforce Administrator course, which is coming up next Tuesday, August 29th. You can use promo code LinkedIn to save $100. And then as well, be sure and hit the link there. I'll also provide the slide decks and the links in the replay areas also. And then if you have any questions, you can reach out here in the chat. It looks like there's some questions here. Tyler, I've been thinking of this topic often the last few months. Uh, thank you for discussing this. You're welcome, Tyler. Glad to do that. And I think that it's an important topic for us to be discussing. And this isn't necessarily self-serving for me because I've built my own career on the hard skills. And I think it's a combination of my ability to communicate. I'm able to communicate effectively and train, but it is training for hard skills. So I'm even rethinking everything that I do as well, but seeing the importance here of really being able to tell stories. And this is what will be the key to success in interviews and also in solutioning. Because if you have an idea for a solution and if you're trying to problem solve it, you can't communicate what those ideas are, then that will be a real problem as well. And there's a question, what are your thoughts on asking interviewers if it's okay to use ChatGPT in a technical interview? I wouldn't admit to using ChatGPT in a technical interview, even though the reality is that prior to ChatGPT, most all developers that I know would use Google to Google answers to technical questions and coding specific things. And so I think it's more and not necessarily mentioning that. I would not mention in a technical interview that you're using ChatGPT unless it's an AI-specific role where they're testing your ability to use ChatGPT effectively. There is a strong need for effective prompt engineering skills out there in the workforce, I believe. And I think that's lacking as well. And I really come to understand how in-depth you've got to go with your prompt engineering skills by starting to create ChatGPT courses, first for edX and then for Udemy. And now I'm in the midst of creating a prompt engineering course, and it has opened up so many possibilities as I've dove deeper into the different types of prompts that you can do as far as one-shot, no-shot, few-shot prompts, chain of thought prompts, that that really opened up a wealth of possibilities for myself as a course creator as well. And so I am using ChatGPT for a lot of what I do with marketing, sales, and service, and even content creation. You will see more and more acceptance to the use of ChatGPT over the coming months and years. There's two schools of thought, those that there's companies out there that fear the use of ChatGPT and those that embrace it. There is that dividing line, or a, which is quite understandable as well, that as far as do we use our data to train ChatGPT's models or OpenAI's large language models as well. And I think you'll see over time, and this has been rumored, is that OpenAI and other organizations that have AI tools of their own it's inevitable that they will open up enterprise level licenses for organizations. It's as with anything else, history repeats itself. Some new solution comes along and that's going to require certain paths such as certification paths. I know that it's inevitable that OpenAI and others will have certifications around AI in general. There will also be more and more controls around security and data privacy and what can and can't be used for the training of these models. And also this concept of bringing your own model and having things be more in-house and building your own AI so that you're training on your own data sets that keeping that in-house as well. And so I think that over time, 
companies will begin to embrace it more, but it takes a while for that to happen. So I would not mention that in a technical interview, at least for now, maybe in a year or two, unless it's specific to AI and your familiarity with ChatGPT and other large language model things. AI is not going to replace this question out there. Now, there's a saying, it's even in this report on here, it says that you will not be replaced by AI, but you may be replaced by those that know how to use AI. So I would say, no, you're not going to be replaced by AI. Any AI companies that excite me or have caught my eye, I'll be getting more vocal in the coming weeks about AI. But it's more than just OpenAI and their ChatGPT, which for me, that was love at first prompt. I'm still blown away by what ChatGPT can do. But beyond ChatGPT, I think other tools that have blown me away would be Opus, an AI tool that identifies in longer clips like this, what are the one minute or less clips that are likely to be shareable or quote unquote viral. It uses AI to dissect a talk like this and can create reels for you. So a lot of things that I would have to pay someone hours and hours to do can now be done in minutes with something such as Opus. Another tool that's amazing is Rask. It's R-A-S-K dot A-I, and that's a tool that I use to translate my courses into other languages. I used Rask exclusively to translate my administrator course, my Salesforce certified administrator course in Spanish, and I did not use any translators and just took this tool said, okay, take these videos, translate them to Spanish. And I didn't even have it double checked by Spanish speakers, okay? And released it on Udemy and decided, I'm just gonna release this and see how it does by way of the student reviews. And so far, it's rated higher than my English equivalent. It takes an ingest video and translates that into other languages as well. And so if I was smart, I would probably put a affiliate link to these tools down below, which I may after the fact, but those are ones that that I've personally used. I've seen my son use Photoshop's AI through prompts and Midjourney as well. But even just with video photos inside of Photoshop, you can replace the surroundings with things such as a post-apocalyptic scene. And so he's working on some things related to how to do big budget looking films on a low budget and, and more visual and Midjourney. And he's doing things like selling prompts on prompt base. And so there is so much going on that there's a proliferation of these different AI tools that are pretty amazing. And we still have more questions rolling in as well. So it looks like it's taking a little time for people to realize, oh, Mike's going live. I wonder what he's talking about. So let's see what else we've got. Okay, so Brad is saying that he's been partnering, quote unquote, with BARD and ChatGPT to accelerate productivity. Eager to leverage these tools, lots of space for creativity and accelerated problem solving. I need a structured way to grow the skill. Sounds like you're the guy again. Thank you. I'm working on solutions for that. I do have a ChatGPT course on Udemy. And so you can look for that as well. And I'm working on a prompt engineering course and really just thinking about doing a lot of AI courses related to sales, marketing, and service, and even how to use that in combination with Salesforce. And so I welcome any and all feedback because. Uh, I was actually the first person to create a ChatGPT course on Udemy as far as specific to ChatGPT. And since then, there's close to 5,000. And so everyone is jumping in because it's such a hot topic. But I think where it's at is finding the proper use cases, not trying to be a jack of all trades, but finding specific things that relate to where you're at, whether that is communication skills or other soft skills that we were talking about, or if it's for small business, if you want to start your own business or consultancy or building a website or whatever it may be, interview skills, interview prep, you can use it for all of those things. So that's a challenge is trying to structure this in such a way that makes sense, a kind of a guided path, kind of what I've done on the Salesforce side. And so believe me when I say I'm giving this, or I probably should put this on the screen more, I'm giving this a tremendous amount of thought because... We as humans now, we have a new superpower with AI. And so now that we can do more, it is essential that we have time management and prioritization skills. And then as well, that ability to be flexible, to communicate, to collaborate, all those buzzwords, exciting times, and all of these things are core or key skills. But finding that ability to couple your technical skills and improve your soft skills, I think that is where 
you will stand a chance in the age of AI as far as maintaining and gaining relevancy in the economy of now and in the future. Thank you, Daniel. I personally am very excited to leverage as Salesforce BA who wears an admin hat also. But I think what's fascinating for business analysts' perspective with AI is that you can, I have a book for the business analyst book of knowledge volume three somewhere nearby you can get a too long didn't read for things like that or to really identify and really leapfrog your skills in realms i've been personally learning more of as far as business analysis with the advent of salesforce's certification that came out about a year ago and you can use this to help you come up with effective questions to ask and that's a lot of the key skills for admins and business analysts is asking good questions, not just agreeing to whatever's being asked of you. Can you give me this button or this page or this list view? But more asking effective questions to solution things now and into the future and gaining insights into how to identify key stakeholders and even uh, testing and QA and how to establish proper protocol and procedures and even identifying gaps, gaps in your own release plans and your own test plans, et cetera. What are the things that you don't know what you don't know, basically, and helping you to have more experience than you really do by leveraging tools such as that. So I agree that it's a very powerful tool. All right. What would you recommend to get integration architect certification. I've not looked at that one personally, so I don't have any personal advice on that. I would recommend that you look at the exam guide and any prerequisites. And I've been doing a lot of work with dissecting exam guides and probably what I should do. I was just thinking about trying to do this live. But what I've done so much work on the admin side, I have taught over 100,000 people on the admin certification. I've taken people through my live class, over 25 different cohorts there. And just as a, just as a reminder on the live side of things, I've got the link there. You can go to examreadynow.com and see my live classes that are coming up and use promo code LinkedIn to get $100 off. But the point is that I've taught the content of this one certification so much that I was able to prompt ChatGPT to identify the topics of other exam guides based on my own work of extracting topics from the admin exam guide. And then from there, how, having it create study guides for me. And I think that I'm close to being able to release some of that information as far as equipping you on how to do the same for things such as this integration architect certification exam guide so that can help guide your studies as well. So that is something to be continued in a, at a later date, but be looking for more information around things. What I'm bouncing around thoughts would be things such as trailblazer prompts. These would be eBooks or even live webinars where I'm training you on how to use ChatGPT to dissect things such as exam guides. Really fascinating what ChatGPT can do there. Do reach out at supportexamreadynow.com if there's anything that you need. Mentioned a lot of resources, shared some in the chat. You may or may not be able to get to that depending on what platform you're watching on. And you can reach me at supportexamreadynow.com and I'll get you whatever it is that you may need, whether that be a link to my ChatGPT course or the report or information on the live class 